Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Ontario Soil Network. Bernard Tobin here for realagriculture.com. Hey, today we're talking soil with Carol Brubaker here at his farm near Arthur, Ontario. Hey, Carol, how's it going? Good, good. Thank you, Bern, for coming out. Hey, thanks for the invite. Hey, before we dig in, let's, uh, let's tell everybody a little bit about the farm. Give us a snapshot. Okay, well, the farm is basically um, hog and cash crop. We uh, have a three crop rotation, corn, soybeans, and wheat generally. Uh, the odd time we get some edible beans worked into there. So uh, that's basically it. Some of our soil gets manure, some of it doesn't. So we were talking before we started the video here, and you know, about five years ago, you basically said, hey, it's time to put away the plow here. We've got to focus on soil health. Why did you make that decision? Okay, well that decision was made um, looking at our fields, seeing what's going on, um, looking for something simpler than plowing, looking for sustainability to the farm. Um, as well as a lot of research on what has happened in soil in the last 150 years. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot, of, a lot of change. Yeah. Talk about your soils. Pretty variable here, right? Yep. We farm anything from, from sand to some heavy clay. Mm -hmm. And most farms are variable. Yeah. And we needed an approach that will work on erodible soils as well as heavier clays that don't move a lot, but working towards sustainability and less tillage. A lot of, a lot of erosion taking place and uh, you know quitting with that uh, horizontal plowing and putting density layers into the soil and working from the top down is just really exciting on those erodible erodible hills and slopes and mm -hmm. yeah great yeah. Uh, now part of this i mean obviously you, it was changing your tillage approach and actually we were here on this farm three right. years ago right. peter johnson interviewed you about the curse buster, uh, a min-till approach or a, an implement that you started using and you liked it so much you're actually doing some distribution. Tell us about it and how it fit your philosophy. Okay, well that, that's a good question. We had to do something. We weren't going to go straight no-till and yet we wanted to uh, cut back on our tillage. There's still still density layers from being caused by rain. We tried to run the tool every 30 inches of rainfall because of the silt, silt movement in the soil. Um, Again, we did a lot of research and came up with this tool as something that fits what we've been taught in soil school, something that'll do what we need to do. Not It's as much what the machine doesn't do as what it does. Yeah, so it fractures the, the soil, um, but it really doesn't displace it or movement, right? That's right, yep. There's 10 inches between the tines, and that soil virtually stays in place, mm. but it gets the side fracture. So it, it gets the air and water holding capacity improved but your soil is still in place so the uh, the naturals and all the the beneficiaries can can work mm. enhance the worm population and mm. all that mm. now you had a lot of soil movement um, we've got some great pictures but now it's starting to stay put and uh, so talk about you know what what you're seeing in the field now especially when it comes to managing tillage and managing residue well it's very simple there's a, a mentality out there that we need to dilute our corn stalks and you know, mix it within five inches and things like that, which is really working against nature. The worms, etc. they they like the stalks on top, and then they, they pull it in and they'll process it underground. Mm -hmm. If we mix it in, uh, they won't touch it. It's got a natural decay. Yeah. So back in the plow days, our corn stalks would be under the ground for like three years. They'd still be there. And now you can look at this field of edibles, the stalks were left on top, mm -hmm. And where are they? I said, there's an old saying that you're not supposed to be able to grow edibles in a field like that. Right. Well, we'll we'll, we'll prove that wrong. So tell me what's going on here. I'm, we're looking at the canopy here. I mean, like you know, you've got uh, you got a lot of uh, trash down there sitting there. Looks like there's a lot of mulching going on. It just looks like healthy soil. Yep. Yeah, the corn stalks were left on top. Obviously, we had row cleaners on the uh, on the twin row planter. But um, this field, this spring, I was out. I think it was like April, beginning of May. I was out one evening at 10 o'clock at night, listening to the worms, mm. and they were they were working away. Well, and uh, you, this this great photo that you have of uh, I think a, a, a shovel full of soil that you pulled up with 80 worms on. Is that right? Yeah, last spring, last spring. Yeah. yeah. So I mean that wasn't there five years ago. No, no, the worm population has exploded. Well, yeah. Well. Hey, let's talk about some corn here. And uh, I, what I'm interested in, in is uh, this great corn field you've got here. And uh, 
the roots. I mean, like uh, the, the the mass of root, the distribution of roots are. Is this something you couldn't get in that soil five years ago? So five years ago, on on fully tilled soils, we'd go to the field, we'd grab a plant, we could just pull it out. Those days are past, mm. no longer. You, we now we need to dig out the plant. The roots are that larger and more established and going down for nutrients and drawn from a much greater area. Mm. Especially this year in 19, there'll be, you'll find uh, what they call pancake roots around. Sure. Density layer from, from a disc, whatever, and the roots are shallow because of the, the early rains. Therefore, we got to keep pouring the fertilizers on top to keep feeding the crop. Whereas we're trying to feed our crop with less fertilizer, feeding it from the bottom up. Mm. And a large root system is key to that. And also what we're doing is it leaving a decay where it grew. So that root system can decay henceforth larger systems down the road and we just keep going, keep going over top. Yeah. So overall, I mean, like from a soil health perspective, and you know, you're still farming the same ground, but your philosophy's changed, your management practices have changed. You just talk about, I guess, that, that, that mindset change and you know, what's it doing to the soils here? Yeah, great thought. So years ago, we used to bounce around on the, on the plowed fields and it, it's a big change and it's, Really, it's simplified a lot. Um, the fields are smooth all the time. Uh, there's no need to go out there to level it. Um, from a systems approach, it's really easy to easy to manage. So it's simple, um, and you know, from the perspective that you know, you got hog farm here. You know, you're managing manure. How does that factor in? We love managing manure with this system. Mm-hmm. Um, the corn cornfield behind us this spring, we actually planted the corn. And then we uh, put manure on top, mm. and the manure soaked in. It was there's no damage to the soil. We kept most of the nutrients. We weren't applying manure in conditions that weren't fit for manure. Right. As well as in the fall, we'll do a do a pre-till through standing live cover crop. We'll apply the manure, mm. and uh, after, and it just soaks in quickly, and that'll be our fall tillage as well. Mm. So. Yeah, utilizing manure in our mintel system is, is fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, final question for you: when, when 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 farmers ask you, "Hey, Carol, how's your soil changed? You know, wh- wh- you know, what's the health of your soil now? What's the status? What do you, what do you tell them?" Uh, basically, look at the crops. Uh, take a shovel full of dirt. Start start down below. Um, look at those. See if you can find any density layers. Um, years ago, we could take a scoop and we could we could find the density layers. The soil would break apart in those lines. Yep. But now that we're going in from the top down, just side fracturing, those are disappearing. Uh, so it's getting more curdy. Uh, fields are getting more consistent. Those those tough areas of the field are improving. And um, looking forward to the future. Awesome. Everything's staying put. You got a, a lot bigger worm population. You just got healthier soil. Yeah, we've we've taken lots of pictures of uh, the spring floods and the difference. Uh, even the uh, the snoil and the snurd and the and the ditches and the road ditches, drastic. Um, we've got photos of distinct lines between. Two different management practices and uh, it's totally totally staggering great story today on soil school thank you for taking the time and as i say you got a good looking crop and good luck for the rest of the year thank you